Hey folks, today's sponsor is Wood Carving Illustrated. If you're a fan of wood carving, Wood Carving Illustrated has been a magazine, it's been a part of my life uh, since I was 12 years old. It's a fantastic resource uh, for information surrounding sharpening your tools, um, dust collection, uh, a whole host of topics. They have great bios on great carvers. They have information, articles, step-by-step -step, uh, help guides and all that. It's a really good uh, place to find wood carving info. So check out the link below. It's uh, the code they provided for us is Carver. And if you use that code, uh, it will get you some free goodies and some tidbits, which are super helpful. And uh, instructional material, <laughs> I'm biased. Some of it was created by myself and Catherine Overcash, step-by-step -step articles. And so uh, you can go into the links below to find the free stuff and use the code Carver. And uh, let's get into this video. So this video is about my top five favorite tools are in addition to a knife. So these are kind of your next steps if you've got a knife already and you want to expand your you know, skills into portraiture, carving the human face. And I'm gonna go starting at number five. So the fifth most significant carving tool that I would upgrade to if I were a carver and is by no means uh, un insignificant or unimportant is this. This is the skew. And the skew is a really fantastic tool because it does a lot of the same things that the knife does, but with a depthness that is really unique. First of all, let's talk about leverage. You can use the knife to push into fibers of the wood, putting your body weight into the tool in the same way that you would a chisel. So keep that in mind. It's a fantastic tool to give you uh, the ability to really leverage the the sharp edge and what's also great about this tool is it has dull sides that don't tend to get into the way of the uh, carving that you're doing as you're moving along the knife has a lot wider of a sharp edge and it can get in the way if you've carved for long then you can imagine what i'm saying uh, this tool stays out of the way of uh, carving you know for instance if you're going around the eyes so easy to use that knife to bump into the nose on accident and uh this does not do that. It gives you a straight shot into the areas that you need to get into. And hard to explain, easy to uh, see the difference when you start using a skew regularly. It's an awesome, awesome tool. You can do pairing cuts, scooping cuts, a whole, a whole host <laughs> of things to do with uh, the skew. So I, I recommend it. I think it's an awesome tool. So the next, the fourth most significant or impactful tool uh, to upgrade to after the knife, in my opinion, is the uh, number 11 Vayner. And this is in the, what I would call the medium size range, medium to small. This is that 10 to eight, I'm sorry, uh, eight to six millimeter range. So anywhere from that six to eight millimeter range is gonna be really beneficial. Here's an example of what that looks like. Um, this is flex cut. This is SJ Addis. All right, slight curve, really useful for getting in tight areas, such as the inside and outside corners of the eyes, the bags under the eyes, around the mouth mounds, under the lips. Yeah, I mean, you can tell there's a lot that you can do with this tool, and it's very, very important as a fourth place position holder for um, you know, most important tools. The third most important tool I would say in this category or hierarchy of importance is the V tool. The V parting tool is a tool that you almost have to have if you're interested in relief carving because it does just what it says. It's called a V parting tool because it parts things, right? So if you're defining the separation of the hairline to the face, it's really, really helpful. Yes, you can do it with a knife. Yes, you can do it with a skew but it is really helpful to have the V-tool to just go in there and do the job of two cuts in one. So this is just a, a real luxury if you're into carving and you can see it's called a V-tool because it's V-shaped. Huh? <laughs> Hard to believe, right? So V-tools come in a number of different shapes and sizes. I tend to use the four millimeter and I like the 70 degree V-tool. That means that the V itself is at a 70 degree angle and you can get 60 degree V angles, you can get uh, you know, 45 and so on and so forth. I tend to like the wide or the narrower Vs because they tend to get in tighter areas and are more versatile. Okay, so using the V-tool for things such as opening the eyes, the upper eyelid, defining wrinkles under the mallar bag, opening up the mouth. You'll see me using this quite a bit when I'm carving. Although as you progress in your skill level, 
you'll find that you use the uh, veiners and, and uh, skews and knives more often to perform the same role. But that's neither here nor there. A V-tool is a great tool to have, which is why it's in third place. The next uh, is almost irreplaceable, and it's the uh, second most uh, significant tool in this uh, hierarchy of tools, and that is the small veiners. Now, it, you can do a lot of scooping cuts with knives and skews and all these uh, tools we talked about, articulating the tool in such a way to create these smooth transitions of form, yes, especially in softer woods, but you cannot get away without having the, or with, you can't get away with not having the veiner to get into these ultra tight areas, creating the smooth transitions of form in really in tight inside corners of the eye, uh, roughing in the major shapes of the uh, malar bag and all of those substructures around the eye, defining the philtrum, defining the oral commissures, the veiner, this is the two or three millimeter veiner is absolutely imperative and here's the here's the tool notice the tiny little u shape that we've got here so it's a really fantastic tool and a very useful one if you're starting out and carving definitely would recommend getting one of these you can see this one's a little bit smaller than this one and uh, i tend to go towards the smaller side so the two millimeter to three millimeters best this might be a four millimeter uh, but either way having a nice tight veiner is super important and getting in tight areas. All right, the moment of truth. Probably the most important tool, the tool that I would say I use most often in my relief carving outside of the knife has got to be the one inch number three or four clearing tool. This tool is so important because what it does, it allows you to get the major planes of the face. But as we talked about earlier with scoop cuts and all these other cuts, it is imperative that you have a large flat plane, slightly curved, see the curve on this? Not very much curve at all, and really, really nice to work with. Because again, you can get the planes of the face, the major shapes, the flat areas by you know, using this thing in its standard position, but you can also turn it upside down to create semi-round or convex surfaces, as well as concave, and it acts in, 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 a, in a way as a multi-purpose tool. You can use the corner of this blade as a knife. You can really use it to make slicing motions by articulating the tool through the wood. You can make these uh, really nice soft uh, scoop cuts that you might see from a number seven or a number nine. It's a really helpful tool. And I would say, if you don't have it, you need to get one of these tools. Now, if I were to say, uh, have a knife and I'm just trying to start to get into these uh, into this style of carving. Would I suggest you just buy the number one, or the, sorry, the, the one inch number three? No, I would say if you're going to get these tools, I would start with the number one, I would then get the, uh, you know, the, the aforementioned tools in the order of importance. I would at least start with the three. Uh, three of these tools that I've mentioned here. So that would be, what is it? The Vayner, um, uh, the, the, the two millimeter, three millimeter Vayner, the V tool and the number four would be a great starting point if you're just trying to get into three tools outside of your knives. So that being said, uh, check them out. Uh, these are, again, my favorite tools, the ones that I find that I use most often. Uh, fun story though about these, uh, these two here, these two knives that I showed you, these were both made uh, by members of the same family in the 18, probably the 1870s and, uh, or 1860s around there. What's funny about them, there's J.B. Addis on this one here, J.B. Addis, is that right? No, S.J. Addis, and this is J.B. Addis. These brothers were at odds with one another and competed against one another in a knife edge making uh, event. This was actually not, a, this was World's Fair, not a knife making event, it was the largest stage at the time um, for displaying of craftsmanship and the like. And the younger brother, uh, Samuel, S.J. Addis, I believe, no, I'm sorry, it was actually, uh, I believe it was James Bacon, uh, ended up winning, he did, it was J.B., the World's Fair against his brother. And uh, both companies, both, started by both brothers, went on to be legendary in the carving world. So just kind of a fun little tidbit there. Uh, but I digress, let's get into, uh, uh, the very final uh, statement here, and that is the, the other sponsor of this video, and that is Fundamentals of Wood Carving. That's my online school. So if you want to learn to carve uh, portraiture and wood, um, 
hard to see exactly what that is, but if you want to learn to carve realistic faces, here's one that I did in the school. It's a resource that uh, can help you to learn to carve portraits like this one. If that interests you, click the link below for that. If you want to learn just a whole host of uh, tips and tricks for about wood carving and setting up your space and sharpening and all sorts of stuff, check out Wood Carving Illustrated in the link below as well. It's a fantastic magazine. I love getting it. And uh, that's that. Take your vitamins, guys. See you in the next one.